What are you doing? I'm kneading it. You're kneading it? Yes. I need it too. When's it going to be ready? As soon as I can. Oh, okay. Wine. Cute little coffee maker there. It's a wine spritzer. That's why there's ice in it. A wine spritzer. You're really so. fancy. All right. We're now let there that is rest. a ball for let it rest. Yep. Okay. And then we're gonna cut it up and drop it in boiling water. Awesome. Yay! Then we'll put the magic sauce on it or gravy, as we call it, up here in, in, in the East Coast. Yummy. What's up? And in the middle of this big mess, there's always time for guns. How do you feel about firearms, Jen? Feel safe with firearms. Thank you. Isn't it great to be around people with common sense? Who the hell's slurping? There she is, asshole light. This is asshole light. I call her that because she's a lighter color than, uh, than Gia. Gia's just an asshole. You alright, girl? You want to chew? Sit down. Uh, did you buy them two, new shoes? Uh -uh. Oh man, there's none left. There, there should be. No, there ain't. There should be. Anyway, just made this outside the waist Glock 19 holster. You know, the new Navy SEAL gun, the Glock 19. Uh, I thought it came out pretty good. This is for a customer. Actually, it's for a friend of mine. I'm really not into. I mean, I'm not into it. I don't have time to be doing outside the waste right now for 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 you guys or anyone that's going to put an order. And they just take a long time to make. Right now, I'm just doing insides, but I thought it came out really nice. Yep, 1.5 belt loops, factory belt loops. Good edges on there. I don't know, do I measure up with the big boys? Not really, because I don't have the experience they do, but uh, all the holsters I've had uh, looks just as, just as good as theirs. Unless I'm missing something. Alright. This, some guy asked me, he goes, I don't want a holster, I just want something to put my Glock 42 in. So I, when I throw it in the glove compartment or to my wife's purse. I want the gun to be protected. I want the trigger guard to be covered. Actually he wants the whole gun to be protected. So he can, you know, if he has to toss it around or whatever, it don't get all scratched up. So I just made him a holster like this. Not really a holster. Just to contain it and uh, protect his gun. That came out alright. There it is. The Beretta M9A1. Well, I remembered. Fully loaded. One in a pipe. With a TLR. One light on it. Alright, that's back to the Gava deals. Or the Inyokis, whatever the fuck you want to call them. There they are, them cute little bastards. How you doing that? Just cutting them and giving them a little roll. Someone else is going to win a flashlight today. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I have to do that after the video. Maybe one of these days I'll win a flashlight. You already got some. Did not. I have to do it after the video, you know why? Why? Take a guess. I'm out of guesses. Everyone complains, they don't want to see flashlights. <laughs> so the people that want to see the flashlights, all they have to do is wait till the end of the video. Cool. So, you think that'll make everyone happy? Yeah, why not? I don't think it will. I try. Hey. Hey. So this, there they are, right? You're gonna put yes. the little, you gotta put the little mark in the middle. I'm not gonna put a mark in the middle. You can put a mark in the middle if you, you have want. to. That's tradition. You gotta push the. Uh, what? You gotta, you gotta put the mark in the middle. What mark? This. You use the back of a butter knife and you just put a little indentation like this. Get it off like that. It has to look like that. Okay. Like a little honey. As long as you add the love, you'll be fine. The old love. Speaking of love, where is Mr. 45 Bullet? You would think a man that big would get around. Where's he at? I don't know. I think I maybe I is. scare him. Uh, he's in the cabin in the woods. In a cabin in the woods. 
All right, now it's time to go. <laughs> well, there is the finished result. Homemade gnocchi with uh, some, there's meatballs, sausage, a little bit of uh, Parmesan cheese on there, or Lucatel, that's what we use, with a dusting of parsley. So. Bon appetito. Yo, do you have any idea how lucky you are to have this food in your life? Yeah, I know. Most kids like you are eating heat TV dinners. Yeah, I know. Uh, my family cooks good. <laughs> I'd like to continue tra the tradition someday. Damn right. All right, Aaron. Well, this is yours, all right? I'm going to bring it over to you. All right. Happy friggin' New Year. Yeah, I just wanted to show you some of my favorite project guns that I've had and uh, what are, you know, the ones I'm most pleased with. And, uh, I don't know, something to talk about. Uh, I know you guys are wondering, I don't, I don't like bringing up other people's channels in my channel, but uh, I do, uh, I am a fan of Hickok 45's channel. And I noticed, I went over there and I, it, looked, it looked like the channel was taken down, but... I think it'll be back up. According to uh, Hickok, he made a he made a statement saying uh, I don't know what it had anything to do with, but there was some kind of glitch, and um, you know his channel will be back up soon, so no worries, and uh, thank God for that. So I figure I, you know that that's what I heard, so I, I hope so, because uh, he's got a great channel. Anyway, before I start this, I just want to mention that. Um, one of my favorite handgun project guns was uh, this Glock 19 done by Scorpion. Um, I'm, yes, I'm still happy with it. I know a few guys, some of you guys weren't too um, excited about it, but uh, because of the front serrations, I think they look wonderful. If you see that, camera's kind of far away today. I should bring it in closer, but to see what they did. Uh, I, I still like the front serrations because you know my channel is I have something for a while and I tend to sometimes I get sick of things but I am still what I'm saying is I am still very very happy that I did it I'm glad that I did it let me fix this camera um, what they did was they put front serrations here and they extended the rear serrations and I'm trying to compare to this clock and it looks like they deepened, they also deepened the cuts on the rear serrations. So they did that and made more of them, as you can see, and the front serrations. I'm a guy that constantly grabs the slide from the front like this. I actually put my palm on one side and I kind of wrap my thumb around the slide right around the corner. And them serrations are ideal for people who do that. Plus I think they look really nice, you know. So when I check a chamber, I uh, always put my thumb here on the serrations and then my my hands on the serrations on both sides. It gives you a lot of traction. And I'm always checking like this. Some people check like this, some people check like this. I check like this. So Something I picked up from someone at work, and I just find that it works best for me, especially with my friggin' arthritis. So, this hurts. This kills me in here. So, it hurts when I do that. When I do it this way, it doesn't hurt whatsoever. So, those serrations are giving me a lot of purpose. So, Scorpion did that. They're right there in Brookhaven, Pennsylvania. And, uh, it looks great. Okay? I also put the Armaglow sights on there. As you can see, these are really nice sights and are not $130 like some of them sights out there. And they're all steel. I love them. They've been on the gun for a while now. For me for a while. So, you know, I'm happy with them. I shoot really well with them. And I love the ledge. Really big ledge on there so you can, you can rack the slide off at any ledge if you only had one arm. I had to rack it off the side of my, my desk, 
if I was hurt, I only had one arm and I had the rack to slide out, you can't see me doing it, off your, off your pocket, off your jeans, off the back of your boot heel, whatever, however you do it, uh, just make sure you train and someone teaches you how to do it the right way, holding the gun on the, on the proper angle as you're doing that, you don't want to shoot yourself in the leg, so I'm just figure I'd throw that in there. But once you learn how to do that, that is really a good option to have. So, this gun is uh, flawless. I did put uh, competition springs in it after I had them in there for a while because I don't know what I like unless I have something. It's, it's got a time has to pass. I can't make a decision. Say I like that now. I want that now, and that's what that's the way I'm going to like it. I need some time with it. After time went by, I found that the trigger might have been a little bit, a little bit too light for, uh, for, for a defense pistol. It was great shooting it and all, at targets and all that. Um, I didn't have any light primer strikes, but I didn't really put that much different kinds of ammo through it to test those springs, those competition springs to get any light primer strikes, but the, the, the ammo I did use, I did not get any light primer strikes with the springs, but I was still a little bit uncomfortable with the uh, lightness of the trigger for a self-defense gun. Normally a light trigger doesn't bother me, but there is a line, even for me, not to cross with a light trigger, and I just didn't feel safe that the gun was uh, safe for me, safe enough for me. So I put the original springs back in and left the 3.5 connector in there and uh, I'm just leaving it that way, okay? So there's that, so we had that done the way and of, of course I put the Vickers floor plates on there which I've done that a while ago and as you can see they're still on there so I'm really liking these uh, Vickers floor plates a lot to, uh, as an upgrade, okay? So one of my favorite project guns is this Glock 19. Uh, this is my everyday carry at, at the gun shop, so that's my baby. Uh, this is a Glock 17. This is a Gen 3 Glock 17. I plan on doing stuff to it. I'm not going to mess with the springs at all. There is a 3.5 ghost connector in there. And I noticed with the Gen 3 Glocks, uh, the trigger pull is a little bit smoother. It always has been. And, I, and you really gotta, gotta do much to the trigger. Shoot some rounds through it and through time it really becomes a beautiful trigger. So the only thing I would like to do to this Glock 17 is um, take these Talon grips off. The Talon grips are good, but if you're a heavy gun user, you're gonna have to replace them once a year, or maybe twice a year. If you're a heavy gun user, if you carry a gun every day, it's, it's in your inside the waistband holster, it's, you know, solvents are getting on it from cleaning it all the time. These talon grips will eventually start peeling off and you'll have to replace them. Not a big deal because they're not expensive and you replace them. But I'd like to get some really high, high professionally stippling done to this Glock 17. So I'm really uh, looking around on the internet to different companies that do that. And I would love uh, to get this Glock 17 stippled professionally. That really would be awesome. Oh, someone's at my door. Holy shit, really? Did you notice the phone was ringing, and the doorbell rang, and the dogs barked all at the same time? Whew. Man, I'll tell you what, man. That was a good thing. That was the mailman. Uh, just delivered me more holster supplies. More Kydex, more all kinds of shit. Whew. Wow. I am not built for steps. There's no way. I am not built for one step. Calm down. I was at the Flyers game last night. They whooped the Canadians ass. And uh, I had a lot of pizza, hoagies, and uh, chicken fingers. It was great. We had this sweet. If you know what that is. Can't explain it right now. Yeah, so, um, why is that like that? Anyway. I want to get this professionally. Now the dogs are all riled up now. So I'm going to go up there and kick their asses in about two seconds. Um, I want to get this professionally stippled so I have a lot more traction. For me, the, uh, the G, the Gen 3 
Glocks uh, look, I think they're the nicest looking Glocks, but they don't have a lot of traction on their stippling. So uh, I like to send it to somebody that does beautiful work. So I'm going to start searching, searching, looking for love. Okay, uh, now as far as the slide stop on the Glocks, I know a lot, of, a lot of people put them extended ones on there. I used to do that a couple years ago. I don't like them because to me, you're downgrading your gun. And to me, that's a downgrade, not an upgrade. When you're putting something on your pistol that's going to cause it to do some kind of malfunction, to me, that, that's downgrading. You, know, you might look at it as an upgrade because, oh, I can, I can just slam my slide forward by just hitting that little lever, or I can lock my slide back easier now because of that little lever. You don't need it. You don't need it. It's great that it, that, that lever is real close to the gun, because you'll never ride it with your thumb and make the slide stop malfunction because that's what that ha that's what that'll do sometimes. Uh, if you have it on yours and it's never been done, then good for you. But you're definitely increasing the chances of that happening. So I know it doesn't look very cool that you know Glock's original slide stop, but I'm not touching that man because the gun runs best with that size slide stop. That's the one I'm going to keep it on there with. So, uh, I do like the extended um, magazine releases, especially the Vickers, because they're nice and rounded off, and they stick out just a touch, just to give you a little more ease of uh, releasing the mag. You know, I don't mind putting that on there, and the floor plates are great, but the slide stop lever, really, guys, I would leave it alone. The takedown tabs, um, I used to put the extended takedown tabs on the Glock, you know, for disassemble. I don't do it anymore. Why? Because I got good at muscle memory or whatever you want to call it. I got good at take, taking them off. See, look, you're making me look like an idiot. Sorry. No, no, I can't do it. Anyway, always when the camera's on, it makes you look like an idiot. But seriously, uh, they're not hard to take. If, if, you, if you start doing it a lot, you won't need them extended take, tab, take down tabs. You, you won't. Uh, you just got to get the feel. It's just, it just comes with practice, that's all. I used to need them. I was like, damn, man, it would take me like five attempts before I can get the slide off. Now, maybe one, or as you can see, two tops. So, I would, I would leave them alone, too. But, if you want to change them, I don't see a problem with them interfering with anything. The only thing is, if you're holding the gun, put your thumbs forward, and that thing's sticking out more, it's going to it's gonna roll up your, your thumb if you hold the gun like that. So I'm leaving them alone. So. Okay. Bam. That's all. You just need time with your gun. You don't need all them, all them little doodads on it. Just leave it, try to leave it as a Glock. Sorry, my rifle fell. Alright. That's all I really, I really want to do to this. I just need a nice stipple job. That's it. Oh, and probably undercut the trigger guard a little bit, because I do get Glock knuckle. Glock knuckle is right here on this finger. The knuckle of your finger, if it's big, will rub in here. If you shoot a lot now, it might not bother you if you just periodically shoot once in a while. But if you shoot a lot, you will get the Glock knuckle, depending on your hand size. So if that, uh, I want to get this scooped out a little bit, nice stipple. And that's it, man. I mean, that's all I'm going to do to this. It's all, it doesn't need anything else. Uh, as far as front serrations go, um, I don't know. Depending on the price, I'd like to get them on this too. But I might not just to have it as a different thing. I don't like my guns looking the same. So, there you go. Now, my favorite, the rifle that just fell. I hate doing long guns on this fucking on this channel, and I ain't got no fucking room. Um, this is a, this is probably my favorite project rifle. Is this C39 V2 from Century Arms? I cannot stress to you guys enough. I don't know why you know the AK enthusiasts they just can't get by the American-made AK. One thing America is great at making is firearms and tools you know we're the best one of the best in the world at at weapons and 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 tools like hand tools
for instance, uh, Snap-on and, and Matco, and all, I mean, they're all American-made. They're super high-end hand tools. Uh, we, we know what we're doing, and when it comes to firearms, you know, we're one of the most powerful militaries in the world, even though it's been decreased. Why, I don't know, but it has been. Well, we still are, and we still have the most advanced uh, weapons in the world. So, for the Americans to start building AKs is such a natural thing. 100% American made. Um, this is the nicest AK platform I've had that I've ever had. And you see it in my channels. I've been doing this since 2009. All the different kinds of uh, variants I've had. Okay? Uh, this to me is just, just the best of the best of the best of the best. I mean, I've had the Arsenals. I've had a Polytex. I've had Yugos. I've had Wasser, Wasser 10s, I've had the regular, the, the, you know, the Romanian, the ones in the middle of, uh, grade ones. But this, um, this C39 V2 from Century Arms, this is on a whole other level. And what I like about it is it's about two to three hundred dollars less than an Arsenal. I don't care what you say. I don't care if you're an Arsenal guy and all this stuff. I'm talking about, I'm not talking about, you know, AKs that are fitted by hand like rifle dynamics. I'm talking about mass-produced commercial, you know, rifles. And the C39 from um, Century Arms, I mean, it's just such a grand slam. They did such a good job of it. All traditional furniture fits on it. You can do whatever you want with it. There's no 922 compliant because it's a full American-made gun. You don't have to worry about farm parts and all this bullshit. You can do whatever you want with it. It's all legal. It's great. They did a wonderful job. A lot of people got irritated with me because I took off that beautiful wood. And it was probably the nicest wood I've ever seen on an AK. And the nicest fitted wood on an AK that I've ever seen. Rock solid. No movement. Every AK, even after you shoot it for a while, the, the wood, especially up here and under here, will start jiggling around and moving around. And I know that's part of the AK, but... It's nice that it's nice and tight, you know. I really didn't want to take that wood off, but I'm really more of the black tactical American look, so that's why I did it. And this rail system from Midwest Industries, made in the USA, fits so nice, I can't even tell you. It, there's no wiggle, I mean, nothing. It's just so tight. It's, it's awesome. It's aircraft, whatever it is, aluminum, it's beautiful. Makes the gun a little heavier. So it smooths, smoothens out the recoil even more. Milled receiver smooths, smoothens the recoil out even more. And this awesome a adapter from Rifle Dynamics. Are you freaking kidding me? To put on the Magpul? This is a godsend. God bless that guy that invented that part right there. Made it real easy to put the ASAP on there. Uh, this is the one of the rare, I don't know if it's the only, I'm going to say the only, because I haven't seen it yet, milled receiver that can take any kind of adapter that a stamp receiver can take. That is friggin' genius. I mean, that, that was the best, best they, thing they did with this, was make the rear to adapt the same as a stamp receiver can adapt to anything. Because most milled AKs, the, uh, the how it's hollowed out in the back of the receiver, you have to get special shit to put on certain kind of stocks. You don't have a lot of options, put it that way. It's very limited. Uh, super thick, nice heavy barrel, which uh, you, don't, you don't get with most AKs. Maybe the Yugo and the Polytech maybe. Uh, that, I do love that. And the finish is just off the charts. I mean, it's like overly nice for an AK. And that's what I like. Uh, overly, overly, overly done things. And this gun gives you that feeling... Oh, it's just oozing with quality. Uh, that is not paint. That is not a high performance paint. It is actual a finish. Stained into the steel. Dust cover is, is double the thickness of most of the AKs out there. I would like to see some ribs in here just because of the look. You don't need the ribs because it's already extra thick because the ribs in the dust cover is for strength. So you don't need it for this because it's thick. But wouldn't it have been cool to have the ribs anyway? Because that's so overdone. That's what's cool about that. So that's the only thing. I, like if Century Arms would say, hey, 
you know, what would you do different to this? Not that they would ask me because I'm not that big of a deal. But if they did, I'd say I would rip the dust cover just because it's badass looking. Other than that, no. Everything's perfect. So this is one of my favorite project rifles. As you can see, everything I did to it. I love the, the Tapco stubby grip to me is my favorite. It, I think it's the most rugged. The Magpul is nice, but it's too AR-15 looking for me. To me. To me, the Tapco looks more appropriate on the AK. It just it, it just looks like it, it goes with it to me. And, of course, this, this adapter from, uh, I think it's called the M4 adapter from Rifle Dynamics. Th this is what made the whole project complete is that adapter right there. Of course, got a CTR stock on there from Magpul. You know, extra thick butt pad and it clamps down. And that's it. Uh, circle 10. Guns clear. Guns are always clear when I'm working on them, guys. Always. Always clear. Nice and clear. This is a lot of fun. It's, it's fun to go to the range with it. Uh, probably wouldn't use it for... Um, home defense, not in this area. So this is more of like a sporting type hobby to have this. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, this is, I love it. I love it. love this thing. Finally got an AK that, that it has everything I want. So there that is. I also put the, uh, the Hogue pistol grip is my favorite pistol grip on, you know, on, on this AK. It looks fantastic. They're only $20. They're easy to put on. They work great. Circle 10 mags, you guys know, it's no secret. They're my favorite polymer mags because they're like a Glock mag. They're, they're a, a polymer wrapped with steel skeleton inside. And, that, and that's the way I think mags should be. Because it's protected from rust. It's protected from weather. There's, it's indestructible inside and it's indestructible from the weather outside. Period. You don't have to worry about rust or anything. And it's, and it's really strong. They're awesome. They lock in nice, awesome. And that's it. This is just bullshit gun talk. Just figure you guys would uh, like to see some of this. Uh, we're going to have a winner for the light now because I keep the light, as you know, at the end of the video. And uh, but this is the end of the gun portion. Through night, just sending really nice light to me. It is called the. The T21 series, T21 V2, okay, it's a nice little EDC light. There's a lot of guys out there that are subscribers that I've been promising lights to. Guys, just hang in there. I'm trying to, I'm waiting for the right light for you, for me to give you, because I know what kind of light that you asked for, and I'm waiting for that particular size to come in to give you. So I'm not, I don't want you to think I'm dodging you, but this particular light right here is a decent, beautiful, it's, it's probably more powerful than any uh, light in its size, that's for sure. And 470 lumens, this little light has 470 lumens, 470. Now some of these have magnets on the back, yep, yeah, that's one of them. Can you see this? Check this out. Is that friggin' awesome? It has a magnet on the back, so it's very handy if you're working on something. I'm going to put the 123 battery, it takes one 123 battery. Take it out of this light I got laying around. Why am I doing this on camera? Because I friggin' forgot to put the battery in it. That's why. Okay. This is a nice little light. Damn. Damn. Look at that. So I've got the magnet. Put it anywhere. That's nice. Uh, how many uh, things does it have? One. Okay. So like all the through nights, it has a nice low setting, brighter, and then there's your 470 lumens. Really, really sweet. Take a look at this. I'll put the link under the video. This is one you guys, I think you guys will want to have. It's just super handy. Uh, it's about three inches wide, I'd say. Beautiful housing, man. Look at that. There's your silver rim with the blue little gasket in there to make it 100% waterproof. LED lights last forever. Nice steel switch on the top. Black metal clip. 
Very tactical looking. Very, very nice, Through Knight. Thank you, Through Knight, for sending this free light for me to give away. Very, very nice. Comes with a nice lanyard, backup O rings, awesome packaging. You know, when your Through Knight's coming in the mail, you know it's not going to be broke. There's no way not in a box like that. Great. So, guys, uh, the winner of this light, I hope I say his name right because I'm really suck at this, is Eric Karstens. Eric Karstens, you are the next winner of this really nice little EC, EDC light. All you need is a, uh, is a 123 battery, and you're good to go. Man, that's a nice size for a weapon light, ain't it? Look at that. That's like perfect. Not sure if you can use it for a weapon light, though. I don't know if it can avoid the. Uh, avoid uh, handle the recoil but that is like a really nice size for a weapon light so congratulations Eric Eric watches the channel a lot and I just want to let you guys know that he has a YouTube channel and it, man he's got a good channel I'm gonna put his link under there too so click the links you'll see all the links under there and uh, I think you'll want to subscribe to his channel he's got a little bit of everything he does firearms cooking videos he's got a great sense of humor which to me is number one He's a funny dude. Um, firearms, cooking videos, uh, hunting videos. It's like it's it's like my channel. It's a little bit of everything. So I don't, I don't hunt, but he does everything pretty much I do. And uh, I think you'll really enjoy his channel. And it's another channel you'll be you'll be glad you sub, sub subscribe to. Dan, I can't talk today. So there. So Eric, uh, I hope you get a lot of use out of the light. Congratulations, and this will be the last light I have because I don't have any left. So when they, when Through Night sends me more, um, um, don't worry, guys. I'm going to keep on giving them away. Now this is a long friggin' video. I'll see you guys later.